Coming up on We Are Not Journalists. There's a war on Christmas happening. We want to be in the trenches fighting the good fight. Fighting Santa himself. Wait. What Where I'm from, it's, it's literally ass. God, God, God. Church on Sunday, church on Wednesday. Knock on doors on Saturday. Go to youth group on Thursday. You know, and you and you learn how to hate everybody. Uh, it's very important to learn how to hate everybody. And then he starts, and he just like beats him up, like right in front of everyone. Yeah, it's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. I'm not sure, it, you know, I, I think Ob- Obama definitely started that. That's where it came from. Hello and welcome to a very special holiday episode of We Are Not Journalists. I'm Maximilian Clark. And I'm Walter Masterson. And Christmas came early this year, Max. Oh, yes? Yeah. Henry Kissinger died. Oh, Walter, I don't know if I can celebrate that with you. Why not, Max? Well, we all know that Kissinger was a bad man who committed untold atrocities in Southeast Asia. And also South America. Handing out fascist dictators like candy canes everywhere he went. Even so, for all the horrible things he did, he died. At the age of a hundred facing no consequences for his actions, surrounded by friends and family and respected by his peers. This feels like a tragedy of missed opportunities. I guess the Christmas lesson we can learn is don't wait until someone's 100 to prosecute them for war crimes. You can prosecute them for the war crimes they're doing right now. And if you or your family see someone actively committing a bunch of war crimes, maybe just for this holiday season, don't don't send send them tanks. tanks. A holiday message from all of us here at We Are Not Journalists. Feel the love! Ah, but enough doom and gloom, let's get on to the holly and jolly. Especially the jolly part, because with us today we have the man himself, Jolly Good Ginger. Yeah, so Jolly Good Ginger is a huge activist. He is also the person responsible for bringing me to a MAGA rally and teaching me how to troll MAGA. Yes. He is that guy. He's also just wonderful in the community. He's well plugged into activists in states across America, and he's been doing a really great fundraising effort for people in need this holiday season. We're going to be talking to him uh, a lot today. We had a great conversation with him, and we just want to include it all. Strap in, everyone. So we are here with the one, the only jolly good ginger. (laughs) <laughs> this is this yeah, is what's, this up, is the, what's up man so i gotta i gotta give the back story here how we met is the best story ever max do you want to say something yeah well it's just like you know if you don't know who uh jolly is jolly is at the front lines of a lot of activism in this country and he's six one giant beard of just gray and red He's like wartime Santa Claus, <laughs> and it is really just like an, like an amazing, just imposing presence, and it's, it's wherever he is, you will notice him, and he is great, and he's using uh, his power and his platform to help others and to push progressive politics and to educate people. He is an upstanding dude. Uh, so, Walter, how'd you meet? So, after the election, when it was being contested and... All that they're having the Stop the Steel rally in D.C. Now, I didn't know Jolly at all. We happened to follow each other. I didn't even know we followed each other. And then you randomly messaged me and said, hey, do you want to mess with those people in D.C. tomorrow? Because I'll go with you. (laughs) I said, yeah, I I do, actually. You know what? It was less than 12 hours. And I was like, I'm going to book a ticket right now. Let's go. Let's do this. The best part about what happened after that is... You posted a TikTok saying, I'm going to go to D.C. I'm going to mess with these people. I'm coming to mess with all of you. Like, and if you don't like it, go, you know, jump in bed with your sister wife or something. And you were just very inflammatory. And I remember watching that in the morning being like, whoa, whoa, no, don't, don't tell them that I'm going to be there. Like, what are you crazy? And you're like, I don't care. Like, they can fight me. And I was like. I I can't fight. Like I'm not good at. I, you're like I. I'm like I wasn't in the, the army and special forces and all that. <laughs> you were like I will yeah, take yeah, on I th- twenty I think of that's them the at once. The essential difference is that uh, that that we are we like we'll do these things. We'll go behind enemy lines. We'll uh we'll infiltrate militia groups and QAnon, but we do it as cowards. Like like our yeah. our plan is always. <laughs> 
if anyone looks at us funny, we are running away. Like, and, and if you're there, we just we just run to hide behind you. I remember being like, uh, like, can you can you not tell people that I'm that I'm on my way there and that we're on our way there? And you're like, oh, fine. I'm like, <laughs> I remember that because I was like, all right, I'll delete the TikTok. Now, now to be clear, because we don't want any conservatives to to you know start their own conspiracy theories from this podcast. I was not in the special forces. Walter was being facetious. <laughs> well, you're in the military and you did but, you uh, did some stuff. Yeah, yeah, I was in the army. I was in the army. I was, in, I was a human, human intelligence collector, correct. No, I remember that rally because I wanted to go mess with these people. And it was my first time hanging out with Walter. But I wore my veteran hat and then um, – Because like you're a, a veteran. A shirt with an eagle on it. Yeah. yeah. You were yeah, I am a veteran. Yes, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, you're not you're not uh, one of those guys that just says they're a veteran to get discounts at like, car <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. I, stolen I, valor. I, yeah. Right. I, we like to call it borrowed valor, but <laughs> and I go and I was really excited about it, but I'm gonna tell you what happened that I just wasn't expecting is just how wild Walter can get. Now I enjoyed it, it was a great time. I just didn't know. So like Two quick stories from that. First of all, from that particular rally, they there was like because you know these people are crazy. They're cultists. They had a cutout of Trump, and they had a long line of people that were waiting in line to take a photo with the fucking cutout. Not even a real person, just a cutout. <laughs> so Walter gets in line. He's like, "All right, <laughs> Walter's like, hold the phone like you're taking a picture, but it's really recording the video." So all right. So we wait our turn. We get to the front of the line. Walter goes to take a picture and then he starts humping the cutout. Now this wasn't I wasn't expecting this. Like it threw me off guard, right? Get in there with him? No, no, I'll take a picture. <laughs> All right, let's go. On the count of three. One, two, three. And he's humping. I'm like, oh my god. And I'm like, these people are probably gonna get pissed. And then the cutout bends in half as he's oh, yeah, humping. Broke it, it. Right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Don't break it! Don't break it! Whoa, 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 whoa. My yeah, God. Broke. I was like, oh my God, they're going to, they're going to fight us now. And they were so mad and they were like, get off my lawn. You know, it was, it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> so we're like, I was, I, I almost, I almost forgot that I was recording because I had tears in my eyes. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I mean, I mean, w- Walter's out of control humping has destroyed so much. Dude, in this it country. was the funniest thing. So then we moved like. 75 feet down the road you and i went viral and it was like this bittersweet virality yes no one wanted to talk to the media so you and i basically gave honest talking points about how the election was stolen we 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 started off we went up and said we want a recount in the states that we lost and not in the states that we won the news media makes it sound like you know we want to stop the the count want to stop the recount but we also want to recount so wherever you are behind, you need a recount over there, and wherever you lead, like you need keep counting the votes. Isn't it sort of like biased? You know, the liberal media is biased. So that interview was just so epic. Walter doesn't break character, so obviously I'm not going to yeah. break character. We can't break character. We're in the middle of like a thousand, yeah. actually more than that, ten thousand MAGA. You break character right now, it's going to be a problem. Walter just gives this very just unrehearsed, epic dialogue of. Republican talking points. It was just, it was really well done. And I was sitting there behind him thinking, damn, this is good. We just want um, our president, um, America. Uh, Democrats did bad things, 1800s, racists, walk away. George Soros, Hillary Clinton, um, Nancy Pelosi, you know, trust the plan, do your own research. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then you, you right. jumped in with your line of- <laughs> But we're not stupid. We're not- Donald Trump is a genius. That's what the J stands for. That was the one time where you and I clocked the cameraman and he looked at the reporter like these people, like what is happening? <laughs> and that's what I knew. I was like, Oh, got him. And that was just mega viral. And the problem is no one knew that it was us. I'm watching this just go everywhere. And people were like, yep, that's MAGA. And, and some people were like, Oh, that's, that's Walter. And that's, that's jolly good ginger. But most people were like, yeah, th- this, right. this is, characteristic of them no joke walter not, not even joking somebody just posted that part of the video where i said that's what the jason were yesterday i've been tagged in all night last night oh my god they're like is that jolly is that jolly yeah, yeah. they're like is that jolly that looks like that guy sounds like jolly i'm like this thing gets posted reposted once a month and i get tagged a thousand times 
It's it's it's, it's been I, like two years now. I mean, I think that was my first introduction to you because uh, Walter showed me this video. I was just like, "Did you hypnotize a MAGA person?" <laughs> <laughs> and just like, you know, see Walter juicing it up, juicing it up, and then, and then you come in with that with the slam dunk there at the end, and I was like. No, no, right? Yeah, you you put the best right. button on that video that yeah. could possibly no, like yeah, the button that you put on it ah, was incredible. just yeah. it was art at that <laughs> point. Yeah. So this is our holiday episode, and yeah. uh, Jolly's uh, been doing something really cool the entire month of December. What I decided to do was for December, you know, I got a lot of people that watch my videos, and I thought, well, do you have thirty bucks? Um, because I wanted to do a dollar a day December. And the thing is, if, if you want to participate, I'll post a different, you know, person or ch charity or just something every day. And you just donate a dollar to it. And everybody that wants to participate, donate a dollar to it. And if 10,000 people participate, then that's $10,000 a day we're going to raise. I'm a 25 year old University of Michigan graduate and engineer, and I've been homeless for quite some time. That is Dominique. Here's her TikTok page, Dominique Engineer. There are a lot of misconceptions about being unhoused in America. The stigma of what makes you unhoused or how you become unhoused or what an unhoused person is like is wrong. The fact is that in America, it's just really fucking difficult to even have a house. Uh, I will admit the last few days I haven't been able to post because I'm not even joking. I got so overwhelmed with people sending me stuff that I didn't know who to pick, uh, but we're getting back into it now. But yeah. what What is that process like? If you have a platform at all, people are gonna message you, hey, I know this isn't your normal content, but can you help me out? And you get so many of those and you wanna help everybody. I mean, if I could just help everybody, I would. So I decided this would be a time where we could just help as many people as we can. Um, and so I just went through the ones I had and I have a really great team of moderators that help me on my channel. Our whole goal is to make sure we're not getting scammed to make sure it's not some, you know, because people do that on the internet. Let's face it. I get tons of people sending me GoFundMe and all these things. And I, how do you vet them? What we try to do is we go to other social media platforms, like typically Facebook's a great resource. Uh, what have they been posting on Facebook? Do they have history? Do they have online history I can look at? Um, uh, when was the GoFundMe made? <clears throat> Look at the previous contributions to the GoFundMe. We just try to find an online tr paper trail to be able to say this person's, I'm 99% sure this person's legit. You're never going to be 100, but 99 is good enough for me. Um, if, if, if you have no paper trail and I can't see your Facebook and you don't have content on your TikTok and the GoFundMe was just made last week, it could still be legit, but unfortunately I can't val verify that. So I won't. Yeah. You need some type it, of you know digital I mean? footprint to show that like you're, you're yes, a human yeah, being. <clears throat> yeah. And that you're not just some like yeah. AI bot, you know? And the, well, not only that, and that these problems are real, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's people that, you know, just scam. There's people that uh, make up lies just to get money. There's all kinds of shit. And so if I could say, if you say, hey, me and my two kids are homeless, then I go back or are about to be homeless, getting evicted tomorrow. And I go back to your Facebook and you've been talking about this upcoming eviction for the last three months. Well, it looks pretty legit to me. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it looks, looks like you're trying to hit like all sorts of different like levels of um Yes. Need yes, to. yes. Is yes. the best way to find these projects just to look at the individual videos, or do you have a place that's uh, collected? Uh, the link tree in my bio will say dollar a day, December day one, day two, day three. Okay. Um, that's the best way to find it. Great, the great, link great. Tree in my bio. And, and that's going to be in the show notes. Uh, so as you're listening, you literally you just have to click show more, click one more time, and then you could go help people right now. Bam! Woo! Yeah. Oh, thank you guys. And, and you know, this is the spirit. And I feel like you know people you know forget what uh the holiday season is all about you know we you know we drag a tree into our house and we you know exchange gifts and we light candles and we celebrate the all father um yeah you know, we celebrate odin yule yeah, yeah odin it's about odin yes <laughs> yeah you know it's the reason for the season i you know people forget that you know this is a pagan holiday and i feel like in this country there's been this cultural appropriation where, where, where they're trying to put all this like newfangled significance uh, on it and it doesn't do anything for our Scandinavian forefathers. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, why, why do you think it has Christmas? Cause it's about Christ max. Oh, Oh, okay. <laughs> so wait, so the funny, the funniest thing is you and I 
That was the first Stop the Steal rally after the election. Then you and I kept going to the Stop the Steal rallies to troll more people. And you were talking to a lot of people, and it was illuminating to me about this whole war on Christmas. And they had a... Right. I wouldn't say their beef is illegitimate, but like it's sort of legitimate, but they, it's just misdirected. It's the war on Christmas, right? Like, like, like they're taking Christmas away from right. us, right? And and I think that we hear this as a Fox News talking point that like, oh, Starbucks has cups, but you have a sort of an insider perspective. I think it's very, very important to note that the war on Christmas ideology is not new in, in any way, shape, or form. Like Walter said, I was interviewing people about this in 2020 because I was hearing about this in 1995, right? So um, when I was a kid, I grew up in the mountains, you know, I grew up, I went to the fire and brimstone Pentecostal church down the street, you know, like where I'm, where I'm from, it's, it's literally God, 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 church on Sunday, church on Wednesday, knock on doors on Saturday, go to youth group on Thursday, you know, and you, and you learn how to hate everybody. Uh, it's very important to learn how to hate everybody. And so part of this fundamental Christian movement in America, and it really doesn't matter what your denomination is, whether you're a Baptist, a Pentecostal, a Church of God, a Presbyterian. Yeah, it doesn't matter which one of the 1100 versions of uh, God that you decided to believe in. The fundamental idea behind the Christian movement in America is that Christians must be persecuted. This must happen. Part of Part of the teachings that the, the pastors are screaming from the pulpit is we will be persecuted. And more specifically, we will be persecuted in the end date, in the, in the end times, in the last days. And so the church is seeking persecution because persecution is validation. Validation of a few things, validation that the prophecies are coming true, validation that God's coming back. And, and at a fundamental level, validation that God is real. So they'll say, Matthew 24 predicted this, and now here it's happening. And one way they're able to really highlight this is the war on Christmas. It's not like, hey, you celebrate what you celebrate. I say, no, it's Christmas is about Christ, boy, stop it. And that's that's all they think. Anytime something happens, like, hey, we don't want your manger scene at town hall because not everybody in town is a Christian. Oh, war on Christmas. Right. Oh, they wrote Xmas. And the X replaced the word Christ because they're trying to X out Christ. Oh, we're on Christmas. Because so what that does is that is real time validation of the persecution. And therefore, it is the end times. You better get your heart right. Well, what what I think is interesting is there's this sort of inherent contradiction because really like commercialism is the thing that has really stripped the religious aspects out of Christmas to make the sanitizable, marketable thing. I mean, like the Coca-Cola Santa Claus. Christmas has become this like very dominant event in American culture, right? Like, it's like you know, it's from consumerist, late October yeah. until New Year's. Yeah. It's the Christmas season. I mean, like there's three Hallmark Channel movies that are playing nonstop. It is at the same time creating this ever-present Christmas environment where everything is christmas 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 but it is also genuinely removed from the religious aspects of it and so it's like it is because it's not yeah because it's not religious (laughs) right there's both the dominance of christmas and the regression of the actual like underpinnings of what historically it was supposed to be yeah right on both levels right you've talked about like the idea of uh parents not teaching their kids about santa as sort of a reaction to this yeah no yeah dude you went you and i we went through the stop the steal rally and your first question to these people was, Oh, do you tell your kids about Santa? And some of them were like, absolutely not. And then you had some people sheepishly saying like, Oh yeah, we, we told our kids about Santa. We caved. We're like, what? That's, that's a controversial. That was controversial. People said it like they whispered it. They're like, Oh yeah. Like don't tell anyone, but I (laughs) told my kids that Santa Claus is a thing. And, you know, and not Jesus and all that. And that was like a big deal amongst the evangelical crowd. See, the thing is, I'm from that cult. And inside, the, and, and, and every cult has nuance. And the nuance is like this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The way Christians, the way the evangelical Christian group uses it is, you know, you've made Saint, uh, Santa a deity. Okay. Santa is a deity. He can see you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're awake. And doesn't even good or bad. That's, that's, that's om- omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent power. So Santa is a deity, which also just happens to be an anagram of the word Satan. So 
Santa is nothing more than a representation of how the devil has deceived people uh, to not see the true meaning of Christmas, which is to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and therefore uh, perpetuated this war on Christmas. So teaching your children about Santa is basically teaching your children about Satan. Um, and that's what they believe. That's yeah. that's a, this is a, this is a really that's why I was asking those questions because no, but but here's the problem: is by itself, that's actually okay. Like that's a decent talking point. Like we could dialogue about right. that. Well, it's cultural appropriation, is what it is, right? Like that is literally they are the victims of cultural appropriation. Yeah, like I feel like conservatives yeah. are like the best at misdirecting their anger yeah. towards things rather than blaming it on consumerism, capitalism appropriation and all of that they're mad at starbucks it's wokeism wokeism starbucks i think there's some people that understand why they're mad and it's the thing that jolly is describing but i think there's also like bandwagon people who will just be angry at like the thing that they heard through this elaborate game of telephone and those are the people that are like really mad at starbucks right like they're like anytime someone is having like happy holidays like i feel there's people that will gladly teach their kids about Santa and are mad that some people aren't teaching their kids about Santa. Okay, here's, here's the point I don't, I don't want you to miss. If the war, if we legitimize their bullshit war on Christmas, then we legitimize all of their bullshit beliefs. And they say, to them, this is confirmation that Sky Daddy is real. This is confirmation, because uh, in, in Matthew it says, you know, they will, in, the, in the end they will hate you yeah. for my name. And so they say, see, they, they hate us for his name, and it's because of all this homosexuality. They hate us because of his name, and it's because we've let we've let we've taken prayer out of schools. They hate us for his name, and it's because the Ten Commandments were taken out of the courthouse, right? So that's the problem with the war on Christmas. The war on Christmas in a vacuum is just a, a silly talking point among ev evangelicals. Great. But the problem is it's not just a silly talking point. It's validation of all their hate. Yeah. I, and I think that it's also paired with this like lack of empathy too. Like it's just like they, they are perceiving persecution <clears throat> when really like what they're observing is tolerance of other cultures. Bingo. Right. Right. When we've been to mm -hmm. MAGA events, like uh, I, I like I've talked people out of it just by being like, "Well, imagine how they would feel, <laughs> right? Like, like, like if I celebrate <laughs> Hanukkah because I'm Jewish, and I wish you happy Hanukkah, am I celebrating my holiday or am I attacking your holiday? And then whatever they say, it's like, so when you say Merry Christmas to me, are you attacking my holiday? And then like the light just like pings on, and they're like, oh. If I think about what it's like to be someone besides myself, I it actually kind of makes a lot of sense. But, there, but if I if like, I decenter like, myself <laughs> from every conversation and every issue worldwide, yes, they're so mad yeah, at Happy Holidays, and it's just like it includes yours. So we wanted to take the wisdom that Jolly Good Ginger gave us and apply it in the real world. If there's a war on Christmas happening, we want to be in the trenches. We want to be on the front lines. Fighting the good fight. Fighting Santa himself. Wait, is he... What side are we Kick on? Kick his ass! <laughs> <laughs> um, so we went down to the heart of the battle. Central Florida, to talk to some people about the war on Christmas and some of the lesser known wars on holidays. Tell me about the war on Christmas. The war on Christmas? There is no Christmas right now with the way shit's going. If you go to Starbucks, there's no signs of the cross, there's no signs of Jesus. Everything you know. seems to be that way now. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's all for the ones that don't want to earn anything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I want to do one for the East Coast? Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah. We, we split uh, the coast. All right, so what are we going to do about the war on Hanukkah? You know, Hanukkah, same thing. Everybody's getting screwed out of holidays right now. You know, you go into Starbucks, like they didn't do the blue cups with menorahs and the Hebrew on it. It's just like the normal red Christmas cups. I went to Macy's Santa Land because I'm from New York and Santa Land where it's Christmas all the time. Not one of the elves was wearing a kippah this year. What do you think? I think it's crazy. Everyone's afraid to speak their mind, be themselves, because we got to live in this world that we do as we're told. Guess what? That shit ain't happening. Yeah. All right. So just to fight against uh, the liberal like bias in the media, can we give all of our uh, viewers a happy Hanukkah? Happy Hanukkah, guys. Two things 
things I love about this one is how easily throughout that event, because we did this multiple times, all we said is now let's do one for the East Coast. And everyone was like, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And seamlessly, he's like, all right, Hanukkah. Yeah, the war on Hanukkah, of course. Yeah, because we all know. Because for first off, we're in Florida. We're on the East Coast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, the how he pivoted the entire conversation to welfare queens immediately. And we're like, we're talking about the war on Christmas, and he pivoted to welfare queens. And I was like, wow, that is a very hard pivot, sir. I should have stopped to congratulate him. Be like, like, nice pivot, dude. But it's interesting because it really demonstrates how insular these communities are where they just assume oh in my community i am fighting this war on christmas and i am being persecuted yeah i guess maybe in new york <laughs> the same thing is happening to hanukkah and you want know props to the guy for maintaining the same energy and commitment for both fights yeah like good good for you i think he just heard war and he was like yeah yeah i yeah. am mad yeah. i'm mad about stuff What's your thing? I'll be mad about it, too. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a good friend. But this is what I was talking about with Jolly, where I feel like a lot of people who are mad about the war on Christmas have no idea what anything means. <laughs> I, I really wish we had taken the time to talk about how Biden is sending billions of dollars overseas to fight the war on Christmas and then seen what his reaction would be. I really like I, I got to let everyone know I messed up. I really, I'm going to apologize to my viewers. You know, it's it's a new year. There's still five shopping days until Christmas. <laughs> but it is funny how ready they are to believe these things about the war on Christmas and their own. Oh, dude, it's, it's my, it's the best joke ever. As long as you say war on Christmas, they'll believe anything you say right after that. Anything? Anything, Max. Do you want to talk about the, the war on Christmas? Uh, it's disgusting. It's terrible. I was in um, a Starbucks the other day, so I'm getting my latte, and as the guy gives me his latte, I say, um, hey, um, Merry Christmas, and he like looks around, he whispers it to me, and then his manager was like, I heard that, and he just goes, and then his manager had an Antifa shirt underneath his oh, Starbucks terrible. bib, and then he starts, and he just like beats him up, like right in front of everyone. Yeah, it's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. I'm not sure, it, you know, I, I think Ob Obama definitely started that, that's where it came from. I love how he wasted no time. Yeah, there's no edit in there. That is exactly how quickly he I said that. I uploaded that video with no edits, no cuts, just to show people how fast he was like, yeah, Obama did that. Well, because it aligns with the things they're told. Like, you, you turn on, <laughs> like, imagine if on the news, like the actual news, like, like real reporting news, they're like, everywhere in America, the left is declaring war on your friends and family. And you're like, <laughs> my friends and family? <laughs> like, you know, once you start believing that stuff, it's, it's slippery slope, my dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, but this is what I'm talking about with Jolly, right? Because he grew up in the church. So he has a very, like, firm, like, pulpit-inspired foundation yeah, for these yeah. beliefs. But a lot of these people don't. A lot of these people really just watch Fox News and they're like, oh, well... I guess this is my thing to be angry about now. Like, yeah, you can't be Christian in public anymore. And I'm like, what? I'm <laughs> Christian, technically. I like being in public. <laughs> and and it really, like, it accelerates all this, like, tension and this hate and divisiveness. But it's so thin. They have no understanding of why they're supposed to be mad. So we could just insert stuff. And they're like, yes. <laughs> yes. It's great. So, yeah, you can play this game at home. Uh, you know, at Christmas, just to play the same game. Or you can use these powers for good. Because they don't have any foundation for their argument, they're actually very easy to bring back around on the issue if you literally just explain human empathy to them. Because <laughs> we did this. We were in Not Florida. Not human empathy. I know. Moms for Liberty would be so mad at me for even bringing... Don't hide your kids. We're talking empathy. But legitimately, if you really just slow things down and ask them questions about why they're mad, they'll really discover that they aren't and everything's fine. And that's also a good source of comedy because just basic follow-up questions can be uh, pretty funny as well. Yeah. So listen to this conversation I had uh, with these two ladies in Florida. And I did this conversation twice. We're going to play both. But first, listen to these two ladies who clearly got angry because Bill O'Reilly said, you should be angry. Yeah. We're here talking about the war on Christmas. 
don't take it away from us don't be too pc america we've got to keep our values Absolutely. don't destroy us and or god yeah. so these are two older ladies and you spend a good five minutes talking to them about the war on christmas and their votes for trump and things like that ivermectin yeah the whole shebang and they are fully on board with all that stuff and then i jump in and just ask them some stuff don't put us down for loving the Christ and Christmas. Like, I've heard this a lot, but I don't know what it, what is the war on Christmas? Like, like literally, what, what is Because I've heard the term, well, but what is it? Well, I think it's the religious part. They want uh, the they America. They really don't like Christianity for no. some reason. No, they could be Muslim. Sure. Yeah. But you can't be Christian. Okay, I mean, you heard it and I heard it, but we're going to pretend that they didn't say that so we can stay on topic. But what are they, what are they doing? In what way are they attacking Christmas? Well... A couple of years ago, Starbucks took off all their, they made it very PC on all their little plasticware that they'd started a couple of years ago, and it's just kind of built since then. They're neutralizing yeah. every they, Christian holiday. Like the happy holidays instead of the Merry Christmas. Right. You guys didn't celebrate Hanukkah, right? No. I mean, you well, light, light a menorah, make latkes, spin a dreidel, right? But, but our, our friends and neighbors do. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And we, we celebrate with them. Right, right, right. But, like, if you don't say Happy Hanukkah, you're not declaring a war on Hanukkah. No. no. So if no, I don't not. say Merry Christmas, why am I attacking Christmas? Uh, but, so do you say Merry Christmas? If someone celebrates Christmas, yeah. But, like, if I don't know, because, like, looking at people, I don't, I don't know what they celebrate, right? Like, you know, we say Happy Holidays just to cover everyone, right? right. It's, and, and I love Christmas. I have a Christmas tree. I have Christmas lights. I set up my Christmas lights, like, a little after October because, like, I, I just, I, like, I love Christmas. I just worry that, like, the war on Christmas is this narrative that's being pushed, like, to, like, make people just, like, angrier at people. Because doesn't the media just like it when we're angry at one another, right? But if you say Merry Christmas to somebody, you might get hit in the face. I, has that has that happened to anyone? There's some people. Did you know someone who got hit for saying no, Christmas? No, no. But the anger. Sure, sure. But sure. I've, no, I've Did known. I've known people. Did you know people, people who, that got angry? That when just on the news. Uh, on the news, yeah. right? So just to talk about what's happening here. In my experience, a lot of the talking points that we contend with on a daily basis are just things that never happened. I'm really. I will. I'd like to commend her for not making up the my friend. My yeah. Oh, yeah. Who who got punched in the face for like, like I, having... I'd like I would like to commend her for being like I saw it on the news. Yeah. It's it like, would, like, like, like it's so easy like... for her to be like this happened to my friend, did it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and and she didn't. But I think it's because I wasn't accusing her of anything. I was just asking. It's like you can get hit. I was like, oh God, have you been hit? Like <laughs> you know, I asked with that compassion because like she's like. No. It's like, oh, you know someone who's gotten hit. No. Well, you've known someone who's gotten angry. No. <laughs> but you've heard about someone getting angry. Kinda. Oh, okay. 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 And it's just like, same thing with the Starbucks cups. They're so mad about that. And this is the thing that drives me crazy. Because if you look at pictures of Starbucks holiday cups through the years, the war on Christmas started in 2005. There was no change in the Starbucks cups at any point, they went from purple and white to red and green in the year, like, 1999. And so, like, the impetus, the classic Starbucks is declaring a war on Christmas thing is completely false. There's nothing to it. And sometimes you just got to and, and it also, like, this puts us in the position of having to defend Starbucks, right? <laughs> Like, MAGA, yeah. like, backs us into these weird corners. We have to defend Starbucks, the FBI, like, Big Pharma. <laughs> the, the, the criminal justice system. And we're like, like, we're like uh... God, okay, hate these things for the right reasons. So anyways, I let the Starbucks thing slide, but anything that's important to my issue, like, really important to my stance, you challenge, but you challenge gently. You, you don't make someone feel guilty. Otherwise, they'll go on the defensive. You have to allow them to be like, Oh, well, not really. I just yeah. want you to know that, like, like from a Jewish person to you, if I say happy holidays, I want you to have the merriest yeah. Christmas of all. I want you to have a family. That's right. right. That's right. One, two, three. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and happy holidays. holidays. And boom! That's all it took. These people were ready to be persecuted over happy holidays, and that got them saying it in, like, four minutes. You did it, Max. Ah, we I, ended you... racism. Just in that moment. It feels good. Now... We're going to play another video where I do the exact same thing with another group. And we'll see how it goes after the break. 
<laughs> Money. Advertisements. <laughs> and we're back. Hey. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. And before the break, we looked at one conversation I had with some ladies where I convinced them that the war on Christmas is a fabrication. Yes. And we're going to do it again with another group at the same event. And you're going to notice I'm using a lot of the same talking points. Mm -hmm. And you are rabble rousing a little bit more in this one, you <laughs> punk. <laughs> yeah. I'm on. I'm taking their side and I'm being adversarial. I'm like, listen, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but even with Walter working against me, as he so often does, you're going to see that we get pretty similar results. And I want to talk about why that is after you hear it. When I was a kid, everyone said Merry Christmas, and now no one says it. Everything is a holiday party because they hate Christ. Okay, if you don't believe in the absolute stunning power of asking basic questions, I want you to count the seconds on this pause coming up. What does the war on Christmas look like to someone who celebrates Christmas? Like, 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 I mean, like, like, there's time do you have? no, but I mean, like, <laughs> like, like, I've seen the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Santa's there. He's not like, he's not getting like mortared shelled. So, all right. So my intent is not to be controversial. However, okay. when she says, when Amaga says my intent is not to be controversial, uh, they're going to talk about something wild. It's not going to be Israel, Palestine. It's going to be, <laughs> oh no, it's going to be next level. And as a matter of fact, we're not even going to go there. I'm going to cut. The thing that she says, it's <laughs> along the lines of what do you think? If you want to see it, go to my TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I had to do a separate video on just this out of pocket comment. <laughs> Anyways, back to back to the holiday stuff. <laughs> I've been on both sides, and everyone likes Christmas. Hanukkah ended like three days ago. Did you guys fly to Menorah, make latkes, no. spin a trail? Did you say Happy Hanukkah to people on the streets? Well, that, I mean, did you? No. no. Are you declaring war on Hanukkah? No. No. Right. And so, if, like for me. If, if someone doesn't celebrate Christmas and they don't know what you celebrate, I say happy holidays. I don't mean that as an attack. I mean that as a welcome. They just don't want you know, people to force their beliefs on everyone right. else. <laughs> no, you jerk. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, we, yeah, the, so the Republicans and, and the liberals, I, I mm -hmm. think, have a, a similar view in that regard. Yeah. And if you say happy holidays to me or happy Hanukkah, yeah. then I, to which I would respond, oh, yeah, happy uh, right, Merry right. Christmas. But it's not. Well, you would say Merry uh, Christmas back if, uh, if yes. I said happy. Mm. But it was it's not meant to be polite. It's more like, oh, we I have saw, a common ground on something we can. Yeah. I still don't see the war. Where's the war? There is no war. It's a, it's a made up it's a made up situation. Right. Red cups? Not in my like Red and green Christmas cups. No, I, I won't disagree with you. Shame, and I don't want to be shamed in return. Right. Exactly. That's really that's have, really where I see it. Like outside of TV, have you felt shamed by a human beings that you've met, like in the world? Yeah. I haven't personally. Lived. Yeah, exactly. I think that we should take this. at times things so obviously so um personally yeah. and just be open to new ideas and concepts Live and love it. Exactly. Yeah. Merry, merry christmas, christmas and happy holidays. holidays and i gotta see i gotta say there's no guarantee of success in having these conversations i mean these ladies were just kind of like drinking at like 11 a.m they're not the most religious people yeah I, you and i have this like fight back mm -hmm. and forth this constant debate as to whether or not people can be reached your thing is like well i can just have a conversation with them my thing is no you're not changing anyone's mind like i i hate talking to people with the intent of changing their mind i don't think you can change someone's mind in one interaction but this is also something we talked a lot about with jolly good ginger and it was actually one of the best conversations yeah, we've he, had with this. He, he was incredibly insightful. This conversation you're about to hear is the best conversation. I'm not even kidding. It's, this is okay. great. Because Walter and I have debated this for years, for years. And Jolly just really comes in with a cool perspective. And so and he said that I'm right. And well, he said, did, yeah, I, you were sort of wrong. He, he kind then. of synthesizes our points. But we'll let you decide. We're going to put this part of the Jolly interview up unedited. And you could just... Go along with us and experience. And see how right I am. Oh, well, the, how right I am mostly. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see you on the other side. Here's the thing, though. 
That's a goldfish moment. I promise you. Because one hour later, they're going to be telling somebody else about the war on Christmas and how saying happy holidays is persecuting them. Even though you open their eyes, they cannot. No, no, no. They cannot abandon that, right? They cannot. Yeah. And unless they, unless they unapologetically see the hate in their love, they'll never change their mind. You know, it, it's this idea. It's this. It's this old-fashioned, you know, debate of do we do we handle with care and talk to people with compassion to get them to see the other side, or do I just have to get in your face and just you know fucking hey you're a bigot and that's the fuck you are and and then like there's a long debate on how well, we and, and and also, Max and I go back and forth on that. Yeah, um, yeah we yeah. go back and forth. I I think you can't change anyone's mind, and that I, I'm. You know, I I have different opinions on it. Max yeah. is like, we can talk it out with some people no, 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 and no, stuff. Hey, and I'm on. like, my, eh. my, my, my perspective is I want there to be fewer bigots in the world. And you cannot, like, you cannot pull someone out who's taught that, you know, because like, basically what these people are taught is that everyone is against you and you can't express yourself in these woke liberal spaces or they're going to come after you. And so if you react with hostility, they turtle up, right? And this is more confirmation that, like, that that outside is the <laughs> unsafe space, and only my cult leader will protect me from this. And like, by engaging with them with compassion, it's like it's one of those things that, like, I mean, I think Jolly is right that, like, without that repetition, it, it it is goldfish and it goes right back. But without those conversations, the only outside world they know is one of like hate and intolerance to their positions, and so they just, you know, they go back into their echo chamber. So my, my take on this is kind of like this. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like a war <laughs> war on Christmas, if you will. Uh, but it's like a war. And if your army only has artillery, then you're not going to, it's no good. I can't, if I artillery the ground, but I don't have ground forces to go in afterwards and secure the area. And then an air force to come in after that and secure the airspace and a naval fleet. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, what, I got it. You're saying we I mean need to that. send more money to Israel. Hearts and minds. It, Hearts yeah. and minds. <laughs> yeah. Hearts yeah, and they, minds. There you have it, what, everyone. Okay, he just said it. <laughs> what, what, I, what, I, <laughs> what I'm saying is, if we do not create an environment that is absolutely intolerant of bigotry, then the conversations of that Max is talking about where we kind of have a, a tolerant conversation is no good. It's no good. Here's why. They need no I, – I want to back you into a corner where the world does not tolerate you at all. And the only way out of that corner is to have a conversation with me in which we unpack yeah. your bigotry, right? So if we just have conversations where we unpack your bigotry, but there's, but we, but then we, we don't hold your bigotry accountable at every fucking turn. If we don't do both of those things simultaneously, then neither one of those things, uh, it works. Yeah. Now, however, however, let me, let me highlight this one point. If I had to pick one, obviously we don't because we can walk and chew gum at the same time, but if I had to pick one, do I do I am I do I practice absolute intolerance of bigotry and, and not and, and they turtle up and don't have a conversation, but oh well, but I'm gonna be intolerant. Or do I try to have conversations and convert bigots? I choose the former. Well, no, I would why. choose the former too, but I sort of like I like reject that sort of like false choice between them. because I because I, I, I agree that both that, I, that I both, do too. That both are right important components. I mean, I I think when when, when I talk to people about this and when I post videos where I'm like convincing people that trans people can use whatever bathrooms, people are like, hey, look at you. You're finding common ground. And they misinterpreted that to mean the middle ground where I'm like, oh, some of your beliefs are valid. Like when I have these conversations, I think it's really important to emphasize that the common ground that I'm seeking is right the fuck over here. Like you have to come all the way to me in the conversation and, and not let up. It's just the way you go. No, I agree with you. Yeah. I, so. I agree with you. So yeah, if yeah, I, yeah, I'm please, gonna finish please, my please. previous point, then I think you'll you'll, you'll, you'll see where I was going yeah. with it because I think I wasn't going oh, okay, where you great. think I was going. I'm saying it, I'm saying I'm saying if I had to choose one, and like I said, we don't because we can walk and choose them at the same time. But if I had to choose one, I choose in times. But here's why: because at the end of one of these conversations, you might have one less bigot in the world. But on the at the on, on the other conversation, people are real life being affected. People are real life dying. Real people are real, being real life oppressed and marginalized. And I think that. It is more important for us on the left, for us on, that are already on this side, to understand that it might seem harsh 
sometimes when these bigots are just getting their fucking just getting their ass ringed it might seem harsh cuz you guys have mentioned you're right when i'm when i'm out there on the street i take a different approach i'm in your face i'm screaming at you yeah. I, I just that's what i'm doing now max max is 10 foot away from me having a conversation great but i'm the guy that's going to tell you you know i i don't you know you're a bigot and 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 fuck you fuck your feelings because i want i i want everybody who's marginalized and oppressed to know that there is a safe space for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that that sometimes gets lost in the conversation you know, where we're trying to have this debate of do how do we approach them? We approach them, you have yeah. to do both. Both must happen simultaneously. And if you ever let off on one, you let off on the conversation. You never let off on the intolerance of bigotry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and, 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 and I think this is actually- I like, just think that, that yeah, gets lost. No, no. And I think yeah, that, that's, I think a, that's, that's really, a great point. Really important. I mean, because like also like, you know, we're a bunch of like white dudes and like, I think- that like there is a lack of role models for a lot of like young white uh, guys who, like who don't know where they fit into diverse spaces, and I I think it's really something that's useful that I think all of us try to model is the idea of like you can advocate for other people, uh, and like you know you could do that by protecting their space and allowing them to speak and giving them the platform and just like. And don't right. speak over, don't speak at, don't right. speak to. That's what that, I, that's a big that's a big thing I talk about. I don't speak over any community at or I speak to yeah. the white community. Period. Yeah. And nobody else. You know what I mean? And I think that's just that's just okay. If you see me out there yelling and screaming at somebody, and you say, "Oh well, Charlie, that's not how you're going to win people over." Well, I'm sorry you misinterpreted my actions as trying to win people over because right. I'm not, right? But I but that's my role in this war. You know what I mean? Now, now don't, don't don't get me wrong. We come on spaces, and I I do TikTok live debates all the time. I'm on, I'm on debate panels every day, by the way. Uh, and we do things like this. We got podcasts where we have open conversations. We got channels like my channel, Walter's channel, Max's channel, channels where we post these conversations. Because let's be honest, half the time you have this conversation with those people, you might not change their mind, but the video being online might educate a yeah. thousand people, right? And so, so when you see me just screaming yell at somebody, <clears throat> that's just one tool in my tool bag. I'm going to turn around, I'm going to post it. I'm going to go into a live debate. I'm going to go into a podcast. We're going to have conversations. We're going to have educational conversations. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go out in the street and create a, an environment where this person doesn't have, this this bigot doesn't have a safe space. And their only option is now to come listen to our podcast and our educational conversation and get educated. That's kind of my take on it. It's not a unilateral approach. So, but I, I hear conservatives all the time say that. Well, just this morning before I came on this podcast, I was on a, a, a political a panel and we were talking to a conservative and he told me he goes well if you think that approach is going to win over the conservatives and i told him i don't care who it wins over if you choose your feelings over humanity then you're a shit person anyway my that's my goal I, I'm, I'm not going to i'm not going to give into this conservative talking point of the leftists are just a bunch of angry screaming meanie heads and they hurt my feelings then then good great i want that to continue because you're going to be left with no place to come but yeah. education well i mean but you know, in the meantime, the thing that I worry about, though, is on the far side of that, because the place that they go isn't that. Like, like, like when, when they're pushed back, the place <laughs> yeah. that they go is deeper in, uh, oh. by and large, right? And I don't know. I mean, I mean, because 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 that's like I think it's a pause. I think it's really important to model both, because I think if you are in a diverse space, your job is to lay down the line, like like to hold that line, and be like, you know, this this hateful presence is not welcome here. But also, like, I don't, like, like, Walter and I met this, like, six, 17-year-old kid uh, at the uh, Trump arraignment uh, who is from Mexico City, and his Instagram handle is New York C City. Wa uh, I'm not going to say that out. Wait, wait, hold on. Oh, I'm going to cut this part. It, yeah, it yeah. Was... But, 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 but who has a neo-Nazi Instagram handle and, like, like is, like, mm. pro-Nazi. And I'm like, you know, buddy. These he's a Pepe the Frog. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, these, like he, he had, he had so right. he had like the he had the obvious dog whistles. Yeah, and it was and, and it's like it one was of those really things, tragic. Like, like you know, I'm, I'm I'm Jewish and I've met a lot of Nazis in my day, and like I don't know, I sort of feel like one of the best things that I could do is be like, you hate me? Why? Right? I mean, like. Yeah. And I buy that. I, I don't. I, yeah. I buy that, right? But I also buy because yeah. I've changed. I've changed sure. a lot of minds. I've changed oh, a sure. lot of minds. Yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I've had. I've had people message me. You changed my fucking mind because I've gone through a deconstruction process. Listen, I, I that that deep deep space you're talking about. They retreat to. That's the that's the that's where I yeah. was born. I was born in that deep space. I mean, I was 
in the mountains, cut off from everybody. We were at, dirt poor, abject poverty. We don't have cable. I literally don't have outside voices. I have the echo chamber I was born into. So, and I had to deconstruct from that. And that was a long journey. And I'm here to tell you that in, along my deconstruction process, the people that held my hand and said, listen, you're a good person. I just want you to think about what you're saying. The people that did that for me, I don't. I, I forgot their name the next day. The people that said, listen, if you want to talk about this, we'll talk about it. But I'm going to tell you along the way, you're a bigot. You're a homophobe. You're you're a transphobe, and and we'll talk about it. But I'm gonna you're gonna I'm gonna call you a transphobe while we okay. do it. I should you not. I think that this is very hard. Is really good, I, though, right? Because it, it is. This is not acceptable, and also we are going to talk this out. <laughs> right. That part. That's how I approach it. That's my approach. My approach is, and I do this now, even on TikTok. You can come watch the, the debate yeah. panels where I do it on. I say, hey. Listen, man. All right, so you're a bigot. I got it. Now let's, un- let's unpack it. Are you calling me a bigot? Yes. Well, I- you're going to call me names. I'm going to leave. Then leave. The, con- uh, the conversation is uncomfortable. Leave. But if you stick around, we're going to have the conversation while I acknowledge you're a bigot. I- I- that's how I have the conversation. Because, listen, I-, I that's how I unpacked, okay, Be- or-, or deconstructed. I was made to be uncomfortable. Do you, do you remember the, I'll tell you, I'll like, tell you. the first thing that starts you on that journey? <clears throat> Max, we're losing you. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, unpacking racism was really got me started. No, but I mean, like, journey, like, right? like, like, you know, be honest, I know a lot of people in this world that never have that, like, inciting incident. So, I mean, like, did you get hit in the head with a tin can? Did like So, <laughs> the, the moments I remember the most in my life, uh, I remember when I started unpacking white supremacy. But that was like, that was not a moment. That was kind of a process because that was like, I was young. I was like 12, 13, 14, 15. And there was no moment. But... <laughs> The, the, there's two defining moments that I love talking about. Number one, uh, I, 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 I'd already started unpacking white supremacy. And like a, like a good white liberal, I think that I'm fucking, if, if, I, if I acknowledge there's white supremacy, if I acknowledge there's racism in the world, well, <laughs> then I'm not a bigot anymore, right? You, but you did I'm still it. a homophobe yeah. and stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. Woo-hoo. I got the sticker. And so, but I'm still a homophobe and transphobe. Yeah. I still know it. But So I was in... Um, I was in Monterey, California, uh, 2002, uh, with the United States Army, because I was in the Army. I was a linguist. Monterey, California is where the language school is. So I'm at language school. Language school is about two hours uh, south of San Francisco. At the time, the national conversation that was being had was, should we legalize gay marriage? It was like a big deal. It was like what everybody was talking about. Um, And shit, I knew the answer to that. I grew up in the church. I grew up in fucking, I know what, I know what God said. Of course you don't legalize gay marriage. Right. But I, I had this very, you know, typical white liberal talking point, which was see, all the stupid shit you hear. You can be gay, but just don't be gay around me. Right. Yeah. And, and then like, just uh, go back in the like, closet. I, I don't, I, yeah, that's the big talking point. Right. No, just, you can be a, yeah. gay, gay just in well, the closet. Like, you know, don't, 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 yeah, don't just, shove I, it in our faces. Like don't corrupt our children. Don't by shove in our face. That you hold yes. hands yeah. with another man. Cause that will don't be gay in public. Right. And that there might Jeff be kids Epstein. around. Yeah. Yeah. There might be kids right. around, right. you know, just, so just, you know, just act straight. And it's very important to note. It's very important to note that I was saying those things in 2002. Yeah. So once again, these right. aren't new talking points, right? And and and, and like I and, I and I had the belief system that hey man, listen, if you want to live with your partner, I, I, I fully support it. Why do you got to get married? And 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 even saying it now, I want to punch my own self, and I might punch myself after this podcast, right? But like, <laughs> like if you hear me just collapse, I yeah, knock that, myself that, out. Right. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but there was a guy in my barracks. Um, that I lived in, we have common spaces or sh- uh, common areas that we share, like kitchens and, and living rooms that we also we all have our own room. So I'm in the common space, heating, heating something up in the microwave, and they're watching TV. And on the TV, they're talking about there's a there's a gay pride parade coming up this weekend, and the guy's like, "Oh, I'm going to it." And without thinking, I made an auto, audible <sighs> like that, and everybody knows. And we've gotten into arguments about this. They know my belief system. They're like, they're like "What's what, what what's wrong, Ellis? What?" I'm like, dude, why? And he goes, just because you're a bigot doesn't mean that uh, I'm going to stop fighting for what's right. I said, what do you mean? I'm not a bigot. And I gave him my talking points. Uh, I totally support you being gay, not around me. And I totally support you living with somebody you love, just not legally. Like <laughs> The dumb shit I said. And he was like, that's because you're a homophobe. And he goes, I'll never, he said, I don't care. He said, you won't, because he's just the one guy who just wouldn't really 
like lay out his arguments to me. And I used to think he wouldn't argue with me because I owned him. I owned, yeah. I owned him. Uh, but like, uh, he, he told me, no, I'm not arguing with you until you, until you admit you're a homophobe. Once you admit you're a homophobe and I swear to God, I swear to God, that guy lived in my head rent free. When we weren't around, it bothered the piss out of me that he wouldn't, he, he was the only one who wouldn't engage me. He would not engage me. He just called me a bigot. He called me a homophobe and he went on about his business. And then I would ask him, Hey, just tell me, I want to hear your argument. Nope. You say I'm a homophobe. <laughs> and that guy and that approach, true story, two days after that conversation, I was sitting in my barracks room and I was having this come to Jesus moment. I'm ironically calling it the come to Jesus moment. And, and I wanted to know, what if they're right? What if it doesn't make sense? What if people just loving each other is okay? What if, what if, who cares if the Bible says it? I, I'm sorry, I don't agree with God. It just doesn't make sense. So I called my dad. I said, dad, I'm struggling. I need your help. What do you need help with, son? Uh, you know, I'm starting to think maybe like, we should support gay people getting married, dude. Like, why, why do we care? Like, I don't know why I care. Can somebody tell me why I care, Dad? And all of his answers sucked. And I want, and I found that guy at, at lunchtime that day. I found the guy I'm talking about. I said, hey, man, I got a question for you. He goes, you going to admit you're homophobe? I said, I think I am. And he fucking stopped dead in his tracks. He goes, what? I said, I think I'm a homophobe, and I need you to tell me why. And I said, can you tell me why I should care if gay people get married? And he laid out these eloquent arguments and he only did it because I met a homophobe. And that weekend, I joined him at the gay pride parade. That weekend, I joined him. Nice. And um, wow, it's a, yeah. true it's a fantastic end to the story. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I went. I went to the gay pride parade, and my my country bumpkin, conservative Christian Bible thumping ass was ill prepared. <laughs> oh my god! I can't. Parade. I cannot imagine. <laughs> I I was so like, 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 you're, like, like, you're reminding me. I was so like, uncomfortable. I, I went to a pride parade when I was when I was younger, and I remember it it blew my mind because I had an image of just what gay people like L, LGBTQ. I get image of what they all looked like, and of course that image is shattered when you actually meet people. And they, you're like, oh wait, they look like everyone else, and you're like, I was like, yeah, I, I, know. Would, <laughs> I was like, oh, how. How is that possible? Oh my god! Like it, the, the image I had of what you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, like my image of what I had of what they look like and how they acted was was I, I like just, yeah, I, it was it was the most binary image. It was I, I feel yeah, like embarrassing this has to be to like, talk about. like like giving an Amish person a VR headset for like an hour. Like I feel like I, 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 feel, I feel like 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 you have introduced flaming hot Cheetos to like George, King George the <sighs> third. Like I feel like I feel like like, <laughs> right. like that must have been That's it. That's it. Because here's the thing. They it was 2002 yeah. first of all. You know, this is so it's like well, before now. It's not 2020, yeah. 2002. And I'm from again, I'm from the mountains. I, I come from a very small bubble. And I honestly to, to be to be fair, I was fascinated by how just everybody was just everybody. And that's not where I come from. Where I come from, you act like everybody else and you look like everybody else or you get yeah. shunned. And this was a group of people who were very unapologetically themselves. And it solidified for me. I will fight for that. And I, t and I remember I told my family, I said, listen, I am openly supporting gay marriage and when the election time comes, and this is this is the day I decided I'm going to fucking start voting too, that I'm going to vote for motherfuckers that are supporting gay marriage. And I had told my family when I was young, excuse me, I had told my family when I was younger that I I, I, I couldn't, I, I believe that we were racist and I was going to unpack white supremacy and they obviously didn't believe me. We're not racist. We don't see color. What are you talking about? And, uh, you know. I don't see they color is always such a red flag. It's like that's. I know. It, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's a what flag? I can't see that. <laughs> oh, it's a name. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sorry. I, a, can't, I, I, I see, see I, red I, flag. I see that you're waving something, but what is it, Walter? <laughs> very intolerant. Oh my god! What is this piece of cloth attached to a stick? Um, yeah. No, but you know, I, I think this. And I think it's a problem. I mean, but I also think that, like, you know, different approaches probably work for different folks. I mean, like, like, like the way in is always different. And I think it's you know really cool to try different things and you know just yeah. No, I just think that I, yeah. I agree with you. Everybody's different, and you and it's, you have to have a measured response. And I love that. Some people, some people, I can I can talk. I can talk and I can hear, I can hear, Hey, 
this person probably won't let me in the front door without 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 much opposition. But so what I do is I'm going to give you as much vitriol, vitriol as you give yeah. me bigotry. If you come out the gate saying some just bigoted shit, well, let's talk about trans people and how how you know a man's a man. I don't give a fuck what you say. Then I'm going to come out the gate with, all right, you transphobe fuck. Let's have this conversation, yeah. right? Because you came out with vitriol, I'm, I'm going to come out but, with vitriol. But, but again, um, again, because every time I'll tell you, you say it, I want to reinforce. You transphobe fuck. Let's talk. God damn it. You Correct. piece of shit. I know, I we are going that, to have a conversation and unpack that so that you have the realization I had. Yeah, sit down, sit down, classes in session. No, I remember the funniest thing is I had some guy nailing me in the comments, you know, and just being like a bigot. I remember you jumped in his Instagram. Like, you know, you can call people on Instagram. You like called him 50 times, left voice memos, and you're like, because you were like, I, we're going to have a face to face conversation. You're like, we're not just talking in the comments. And you were like, I'm going to talk to you. And then he was like, <laughs> like, whoa, dude, relax. And this is a guy who was being very aggressive. Suddenly he was like, suddenly you were a bridge too far. And you weren't like, th these weren't <laughs> threats. You were like, I'm going to have a conversation with you where I look you in the eye. And he was like, dude, stop. I just wanted to say racist stuff and accuse Walter of being racist yeah. in the same sentence. So uh, uh, just you, you're the, you're the crazy one here. And I thought that was great. I was like, that's a great approach. I was just doing comment replies. You're like, <laughs> no, I'll talk to you for an hour. Like you will never want to talk to any, you will never mention this again because like the result will be a, a conversation that yeah. goes on for an hour. What? <laughs> Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent of and, conversation. And the funniest thing is, end with them you, you and I. So Max and I, we went to this anti-immigrant rally. Uh, <laughs> they were, pro and so we went there as like we were protesting Eric Adams. We, we went like, oh, as we agree leftists, with you. We, like left because we also don't hate, like Eric Adams, yeah. <laughs> Mayor Adams. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> the, so you see my video. It's this guy starts the conversation calling Eric Adams a dumb N-word. Like, that's his opener. Yeah, like, right? we just Boom, met this Right guy. out the gate. He's like, well, right? if he can and call then, uh, white police officers crackers, I can use the N-word. And we're like... And, it, and, it, and I gave him a chance to walk it back. I was like, wait, excuse me? And he repeated the exact same thing, but just with more... And, the fu and the, then the funny thing is, his wife came in, and she's from South Africa. She left for because of apartheid. And she like, Ending. and all the comments were like, I think she left because apartheid ended. Like, so they both were accusing us of being the racist, the real racists, which I was like, you just said the N word, dude. Like, you can't call me the racist after saying the N word. Like, it does, nothing works like that. So then, well, for white supremacists, yeah. they can because they've, they've been, yeah, well, they've been I, I mean, because cracker is, is yeah. equivalent. Yeah. In, the, yeah. in yeah. their world, right? So the, the best part was, I'm edit I had to edit this footage and I'm looking at you know clip after clip of us talking to this guy. We spoke to him for maybe 30, 45 minutes, like nonstop. And we didn't tie our hands behind our back. We were not tolerant of his open racism and his ignorance. We called it out and made fun of him, but we stayed in the conversation. And I think it was interesting. He the look on his face towards the end was like he was like i don't he looked like he's like i've never spoken to someone this long before because usually they stomp off and say you're a bigot end of conversation thank you i'm protecting yeah, I mean, my own well, space and, and i think I, I think that's why done. their their language has become so extra vitriolic too is in order to prevent those kinds of conversations right like like you just you know if you say that you won't have to talk to them anymore uh, which I think is right. No, no, that's true. They want out of the yeah. conversation, right? They want out of the conversation. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. Cause I'll tell you one more quick story. This is a whole lot faster story, but I was, uh, I was like 33 before I found out I was a transphobe 30, 30, maybe a little bit younger, maybe 30, 31, something like that. I was in my thirties before I realized I was a transphobe. But at the time, slowly the conversation of, uh, trans humans was entering, the, you know, the public space uh, obviously been around for a while, but it was just entering my public space because I live in a pr uh, very privileged bubble where I don't have to have the conversation. And um, my take on it, because again, now I'm a white liberal who's 
been unpacking white supremacy for 10, 15 years. And I've admitted I'm a homophobe now for at least 10 years. And you know, I've been I've been unpacking my homophobia. So I'm definitely not a bigot anymore, right? Definitely not a bigot anymore. So when the conversation comes up of trans people, uh, my answer was, I fully support a person to live however they want to live. And I just think that there's a underlying reason mentally they're, that they're, they want to live that way and that they should get the help they need. Very disgusting. But, but what's interesting view, is right? how similar that is to what you had been saying about gay marriage. It's, it's very sanitized. It's Bingo. sanitized. Right. It, it's a it's sanitized like, 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 yes. like I don't have a problem conceptually with people wanting to live the way they, they, they want to live, but they should do it like this. Yeah. Yep. And what happened was I posted on my Facebook <clears throat> something to that effect. I mean, it wasn't my first time saying it. It just I posted on my Facebook something to that effect. And there was a guy who um, he was – junior to me in the military is probably i don't know i'd say five six seven years younger than me maybe not that much Dude, maybe what is going on with all these military members just like you know bashing white supremacy like what this is amazing like <laughs> this is going on in the military uh this episode is yeah, uh, sponsored by uh the u.s uh, army go army.com yes go army.com <laughs> so fucking he he was uh he was junior to me in the military. He considered me a mentor. Looked up to me. Would sing my praises because I in in terms of our job, the job field that we were in, I just so happened to be really good at it. And so I like I was in charge of a lot of people, and I was putting I I do a lot of training because I was good at. It, so I would train other people how to do what I do. And he was one of those guys that just clung to me because he wanted to be me. He wanted to be as good as I was. And I don't mean that in an egotistical way. I'm just trying to paint the picture here. This guy really liked me this guy thought the world of me called me his mentor and i had kind of taken him under my wing i would even call him a friend he he, he private messaged me on facebook and he said to me the following it is people like you that are the reason that my sister took her own life i think you're disgusting i'm blocking you on this app i'm blocking your phone number and i never want to speak to you again and me and this guy had never had a foul word between ourselves. And I was so taken aback. And to, to be honest with you, until recently, I couldn't tell you this story without crying. I swear to God, I used to cry telling the story because it hurt me so deeply. that Because I could tell in, in the way he worded it, I had hurt this guy. Like, there's no fucking two ways about it. I hurt this guy. And I could not figure out, like, and he did not answer me. Because back at the time we had already I had already moved duty stations, so we weren't stationed together no more. So I didn't speak to him again. Like he blocked me on Facebook, blocked phone number, just like he told me he would. And I had to try to. I was stuck. Like how? What? And I kept analyzing what I posted. I was so hurt by his message. I deleted my post on Facebook, but I kept going over the words, the words, and it occurred to me that my words really. So I started asking questions, and I had one friend in Oregon who. He's he's like we, you got what we're talking about. He he had been my friend for a long time, but he made sure to remind me I'm a transphobe every time we, the trans conversation came up. And I called him. I said, "Listen, I have hurt this guy, and I don't know why. And he won't talk to me. I need you to tell me why." I said, "Whether I agree or disagree with you, I need you to tell me why." And he told me why, and it made sense. And I and I realized that day I'm a transphobe, and I began the deconstruction process for that. And my whole point in saying this is both of my biggest epiphanies in life came from being forced by other people to confront my own bigotry and having nowhere to escape, but understanding an education. Um, and, 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 and so for me, sorry. that's it. It's kind of like how Scientology I, works. No, 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 I, wait, I wait, think wait. that's, um, wait, wait, Russell, finish the conference. <laughs> <laughs> no, my thought was, so for me, that has been my approach, uh, to, to other people is I am going to make sure you understand. I will not give you a fucking way out of this conversation. Uh, uh, to be comfortable. This conversation is going to be uncomfortable. It's going to happen, but it is going to be uncomfortable. And if that's too much for you, then we won't have the fucking conversation. You can come back tomorrow. You can come back next week, whenever, because that's what happened to me. Yeah. I had to be forced. I was uncomfortable. But you know what? The education happened. Well, I, mean, I also I think it, that it's interesting, probably useful, that like 
the the two times that you mentioned, these are people that are like in your life, right? Like it's not people that that they're just sort of like yes. you know glancing in and out. Like these are people that have like significant opinion you care about. And I think for for our listeners too, yes. it's like you know part of why we model these things isn't for the people that we talk to. Like like these are models for to have the conversations not with like you don't need to go to a QAnon rally. Talk to the people in your life. Like that is I I think probably the Agreed. most meaningful way that you can like impact things is by yeah agree because because like yeah if i say listen relationships whatever but if you tell your dad that he sucks that's gonna linger bingo a (laughs) hundred percent agree with you i've said it a thousand times the the people that are going to change the the minds of bigots are the people that have relationships with them um and so that, that, that brings the conversation full circle so why do i do what i do online not so much to change the the mind of the person in front of me but to embolden the other people that agree with me to turn around and say it to their cousins and their coworkers and their pastors and their poppies and their mommies. And, 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 and that's what I want you to do. Uh, you know, and since a lot of people are going home for the holidays, you know, no time like the present, uh, folks. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, I completely. I mean, I think that's agree. a great, like it should be. Oh, I, I like that. Is it, you know, like the conversation should be uncomfortable because I, I remember I was, I came to you, Jolly, initially about, you know, word choices and with regards to, you know, you know, defund the police, abolish the police. And, and you were like, it's, un- yeah, it's uncomfortable. Like it's confronting. It's this, like, I'm not, sh- I'm not sanitizing this, like, so that you feel better. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You're unpacking your awful yes. beliefs and. The way you, your worldview right. around things. Um, yep. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not not to beat a dead horse, but like, I, I used to tell people I love racists, and they were what? I'm like, yeah, the person who fucking bandaged my knee was a racist. The person who fucking hugged me when I was sad was a racist. The person who put food on my table was a racist, and I love them because that was my dad. And so, the, this is a nuanced conversation that we need to approach with the respect of the nuance it has. I need to hold those I love accountable for their bigotry and, and, and understand that me loving them doesn't negate their bigotry. And that's a hard conversation to have, but it has to happen. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, just, I love you, but you're a bigot. Like, but this is the bigot bingo. of you. Uh, and that's, and that's, that is good. Yeah. Uh, Cause it, and that's, I, and I, and I will cut, I will cut you off if you don't admit it. Like that's the, that's the approach. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to have a relationship with me, you're going to have a relationship with me without being a fucking bigot. And then one day they're going to say, hey, I want to have a relationship with you. I don't want you to cut me off anymore. It's been two years. Great. Let's have a conversation about your bigotry. And it works. Great. Uh, So, yeah. So, folks, uh, if you're uh, flying home and you have that uh, uh, uncle that makes you extremely uncomfortable with his uh, views, um, try it out. Also, also like, you know, Jolly did a TEDx talk on this where you talked about how your dad was a, you know, white supremacist and how he you know said oh you know those colored people those are the ones on welfare meanwhile he collected welfare like oh they're the drug dealers meanwhile he sold you know you you had a whole thing it was pretty brilliant it was it it was kind of like undeniable for someone to watch it and go well i'd be like nope like this is my personal story it was very powerful it was very moving Mm -hmm. and you know it was it was too real for ted that's why it was tedx (laughs) <laughs> the Ted doesn't want to have that. Ted doesn't want to have that conversation. Mm. Ted wants to have conversations that make, you know, white liberals comfortable. Uh, Ted X, you were mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm going to make everyone here real uncomfortable. I'm going to talk about my dad, who I love to death and idolize and worship. And he's an unrepentant bigot. And I'll call him that uh, on his grave. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, I, you know, I, th- I think yeah. this is a really good place to end it uh once again this has been jolly good ginger uh you can follow all of his links in uh the show notes and and, uh, again if you have a couple of extra bucks uh consider using it uh to help people in need this holiday season (laughs) yeah (laughs) jolly good ginger totally confirmed that i was like right and you should just go to people and say hey you're a bigot and let's talk about it Again, he took what's good about both of our approaches and he squished yeah. them together, which is why we're such a functional unit. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know. It, the whole conversation leaves me feeling like just filled to the brim with Christmas spirit. I want to share it with someone. 
Let's share the Christmas spirit with someone. You know, call your loved ones. Call your friends. Call your representatives. Call other people's representatives. Thank you for calling the Central Texas Office of U.S. Senator Ted Cruz. We are currently unavailable at this time. Please leave a brief message with your name, phone number, email address, and zip code. Thank you. Hey, we just wanted to wish you a very warm Christmas. Heated by the coal in your stocking, you piece of shit. Yeah, why don't you shove a candy cane up your mother's and you Krampus like cryptid of planes? Get out of here. Just retire. Fuck you. This is going to be our, our Christmas episode, Max? Yeah. Or holiday episode. Right. Holiday episode. Don't say it like that. Yeah. Don't say it like that. <laughs> Until next time. Thank you for listening to this Podcast One production.